What's up everybody, Mr. Forrest back with the final episode for Epic Bible Fun 2021. Guys, we're gonna waste no time jumping into this. If you haven't seen any of the parts leading up to it, you're gonna wanna watch part one, two, three, and four before this because this is part five. So if you haven't seen it, pause this, go back, watch the other ones because we're wasting no time. Let's jump right into it. Ed unwrapped the gift that his mom had put in his luggage so long ago that had been sitting in the bottom of his backpack this entire time. And when Ed saw what it was, he gasped because inside was a waterproof track phone. A track phone is a satellite phone that can get reception anywhere in the world. And his mom knew that they would be traveling technically outside of the United States. And she knew that they'd be around a lot of water. So she got him a waterproof track phone. And she knew when everybody else was like swimming and stuff. And back then Ed was scared of the water. So he'd always feel lonely when everyone else was swimming. And she knew how much he liked to play roadblocks, uh, Minecraft, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale. And she thought, she didn't want him on the phone the entire vacation or playing video games all the time. But every once in a while, when he felt lonely, he could play video games. But this entire time he had a track phone and now he can call 911. So Ed wanted to see if it worked and he pressed the power button. It powered on. It worked and it had batteries. Ed thought to himself, well, I could call 911, but what's another five minutes? I might as well check my Subway Surfer account. What am I doing? And he called 911 and they transferred him over to the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard said, son, we don't know where you are. The only way we can tell is if we track your phone, you're going to have to read the serial number off the back side of the phone. And Ed flipped it over and he saw the words serial number. And Ed wondered to himself, why do they call it a serial number? Does it taste delicious with milk? Does it have colorful freeze-dried marshmallows in it? On the box, is there a toucan or a leprechaun or a silly rabbit? Is it part of this complete breakfast? The man on the other end said, son, read the number. It said, oh, oh yeah. And he read the serial number. Within seconds, the man said, we have a track on your location. Stay put, stay by the beach. We are scrambling the Coast Guard now and they're gonna bring your parents to you. Ed didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to do. His heart was flooded with all kinds of emotions. He was going to miss Ishmael Island. He was gonna miss his long walks on the beach, praying at night under the stars. He was gonna miss reading his Bible by the waterfalls in the mornings. He was going to miss spear fishing and diving in his camp. He was gonna miss the grouchy crab and Ferdy that he decided to name the Fertiland snake Ferdy and the tiger shark. No, he wasn't gonna miss the tiger shark, but he was gonna miss everything else about it. And now he was going to be rescued. For old time's sake, Ed went and found the grouchy crab and he picked him up and he clamped him to his nose and it hurt a lot worse than he remembered it hurting. <laughs> his eyes started tearing up again. And once again, he was conflicted. Was he tearing up because he was so emotional over potentially leaving the island or was he tearing up because this hurt so bad? <laughs> he walked back to his beach camp with this uh, crab-sized nose ring hanging from his nose <gasps> and there was a boat there already but it didn't look like the Coast Guard and there was a dinghy with four men aboard rowing toward the shore. He recognized those men anywhere. They were the bank robbers. Ed almost didn't see them. He was so busy thinking about being rescued and how much he'd miss everything. It's a good thing he picked his head up when he did because they didn't see him yet. Ed turned around and darted back into the jungle. He didn't know what to do, so he ran as fast as he could to his waterfall camp in order to hide. And by this time, Ed had grown lean and strong and quick from being on the island so long. And he ran and he hid behind the waterfalls. And he brought his knees to his chest and he hid in the darkness, shaking. 
He knew that those bank robbers came back for their money. And he knew they came back for Ed. Are they going to find Ed? Will the Coast Guard rescue him in time? You got to wait till next week to find out. Just kidding. This is the last week of Epic Bible Fun. Guys, sit up straight. Listen up, because you're about to find out. Ed knew that if he stayed behind that waterfall, eventually those bank robbers would find him. He knew that he was going to have to hold out and do something until the Coast Guard got there. So he took a deep breath. He prayed for courage. And he decided to defend his camp, Home Alone style. For the next two hours, Ed trapped up his waterfall camp. And when all the traps were set, he knew he was ready. He puffed out his chest and he walked confidently toward the beach camp. He peeked out and he saw the four men prepping their camp on the beach. Ed wanted to do something shocking. He wanted to jump out and intimidate them and scare them. So he tried to think of the meanest, baddest thing he could possibly say. And he jumped out of the jungle and he said, nya, 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 nya. And then he turned and he ran. They all jumped to their feet and Melvin said, it's a kid, get him. And Ed could hear their footsteps behind him. And it was almost too easy by this point. Ed was so strong and quick by this point, he could have outrun them with ease, but he decided instead to allow them to catch up so they could see him because he wanted to lead them back to his waterfall camp where the traps were. Ed jumped over rocks and ducked under tree branches and he got to the waterfall camp and he grabbed one of the big branches and he curled it around himself and he waited. And when he heard their footsteps get close, he let go of the tree branch and it thwack! It hit Larry so hard, it clotheslined him, sent him flipping and flying through the air. He landed on the ground with a thud. It knocked the wind out of him, and Ed thought he might even pass out. Ed said, one down, two to go. Ed kept running, and he got to where he had laid his net, and he jumped, and he leapt, and he landed on the other side of the net, and he turned around, and he saw the other dopey one that he didn't know his name get tripped and tangled up inside the net and he couldn't get out and Ed grabbed the grouchy crab and he clamped it to his nose. Two down, one to go. Ed ran until he found a very familiar rock. You guys might know which rock it was. He jumped over the rock, he landed on the other side and he turned to face Melvin. And he looked confident, almost daring Melvin to step closer. Melvin wondered. He expected Ed to run away screaming. Ed, Melvin wondered what was going on. Ed said, hey, Melvy Welvy, I bet you didn't expect to see me again. Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. Melvin said, I'm going to enjoy cutting you up into shark bait. Ed said, you don't know about me, fool. Melvin stepped forward, stepping onto the rock, and immediately Ferdy pounced attaching herself to Melvin's leg. Melvin screamed and he pulled Ferdy off and threw her into a bush and he held his leg and Ed said, Melvin, you have two choices. You can either run after me and I am much quicker than you. You'll never catch me. And your heart will beat so fast, it will pump your blood faster through your body and that venom will spread because you've just been bitten by a fur de lance snake. You can run after me and you will certainly die, or you can lay down and lay perfectly still. Allow me to tie you up. The Coast Guard is on their way and they can administer medical attention to you when they get here. And maybe, just maybe, you'll survive. Melvin said, whatever, just, just tie me up. I don't want to die. And he laid down. And Ed tied Melvin up with the same rope Melvin had tied him up a month ago. Ed took his time tying up Melvin, making sure it was nice and tight and all the knots were secure. And then Ed began to suck the venom out where Ferdy had bitten him and spit it out. When he was done, he ran to the waterfall, scooped water in his mouth, squished it around and spit it out. He didn't want any of the venom in his body. Ed rose to his feet and turned around and walked back toward his beach camp. And someone came out of the bush into the clearing. It was Ishmael. 
had said, oh, Ishmael, and he went running and he hugged Ishmael. He said, I have thanked God for you every day. I have prayed for you every day. Thank you so much for rescuing me. And when Ed looked at his face, he saw a big scar. And Ed knew he got that scar when Ishmael helped Ed go free. He said, Ishmael, the Coast Guard's coming and they're going to arrest these guys and you can be free from them now and we get to go home. And Ishmael said, yeah, but I'm probably going to prison for the rest of my life. Ed said, no, I'll testify at your court hearing. I'll tell them how you helped rescue me and how these guys forced you into the crime. They walked back to the beach and sat down on the beach waiting for the Coast Guard to come. And for the next half hour, Ishmael told his story to Ed about how Ishmael's parents died in a car wreck when he was around Ed's age. And Ishmael went to live with his uncle Larry. Ed had an uncle Larry, but not a criminal uncle Larry. Ishmael's uncle Larry forced him into a life of crime. And Ed felt sorry for Ishmael, but hopeful. Hopeful that he would get a fresh start and a new place to live. Ed said, Ishmael, since being on this island, I have learned so much from Romans 5. Can I share with you something special from Romans 5? And Ishmael said, sure. But what's a Romans 5? Ed chuckled and he talked Ishmael through the five facts from Romans 5 about God's wonderful salvation. Say them with me if you guys know them. Fact number one, everyone is a sinner, even me. Fact number two, sin must be paid for. Fact number three, Jesus loves me and paid for my sins. Fact number four, to be saved means to be rescued from my sins and have a relationship with God. And fact number five, I can be saved by repenting and believing on Jesus. Ishmael said, you really think God would forgive me for my sins? And Ed said, yes. That's why Jesus came and lived a perfect life and then died on the cross and then rose again to pay for your sins, Ishmael. Sin must be paid for and Jesus paid for them for you. And there's nothing you can do to save yourself. You just need to turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus. That's what it means to repent. And then you need to realize there's nothing you can do to save yourself. You just need to believe on Jesus. Remember like the life preserver, just Trust the only one who can save you, and he will. He said, Ishmael, you can be rescued from your sin and brought into a relationship with God. The boys bowed their heads, and in his heart, Ishmael turned away from his sins and turned to Jesus. And at that moment, Ishmael was rescued from his sins, and he became a part of the family of God. It's what Romans 5 calls peace with God. The boys lifted up their heads after praying and it was coming. The Coast Guard boat was on the horizon. Again, Ed was flooded with emotions and he was crying because he was so happy for Ishmael, but now he was going to be rescued from the island and he thought of all the times God had rescued him. God rescued him from the wild ocean in the middle of a storm when he was pitched overboard. God had rescued him from starving to death by helping him overcome his fear of water. And he had an abundance of food by spearfishing. God rescued him from dehydration when he helped him to find that waterfall with the fresh water. He rescued him from the fertilant snake. He rescued him from the tiger shark. He rescued him from the bank robbers. And now he was rescuing him from being a castaway on an island. But most importantly, God had rescued Ed from his sins. Ed and Ishmael got on the boat and they hugged it out with Ed's parents and Ed introduced his parents to Ishmael and taught, told them about how he rescued him from the bank robbers and the bank robbers were arrested by the Coast Guard and all the way back to Jamaica, Ed told his parents the entire story of what had happened. All the way back from Jamaica, their flight to Miami and then their flight home. Ed didn't sleep this time. He told his story as his parents and his sister listened attentively. Ed got home, and as strange as this sounds, life went back to normal. 
And it was hard for Ed because he was used to adventure. He was used to being king of his island. But it went back to normal. Ed did testify at Ishmael's court hearing, and the judge declared Ishmael innocent. Like that word in Romans 5, justified. Remember that word, God sees and declares me righteous. That's what happens when a sinner repents and believes on Jesus. God doesn't see that person as a sinner anymore. He sees that person just as if they always had the righteousness of Jesus Christ justified. God sees and declares me righteous. Ishmael was adopted by a new family, a family who loved him and took care of him. And him and Ed would write letters often. Ed also testified at the court hearing of the bank robbers, and the jury found them guilty. Each bank robber got 20 years to life. But the police never found the money on Ishmael Island. And Ed wondered, whatever happened to it? Ed thought to himself, someday I'd like to go back to Ishmael Island. But that is a story for next year. The end. Guys, I hope you enjoyed Epic Bible Fun 2021. Let's go over our five facts from Romans 5 about God's wonderful salvation. Fact number one, everyone is a sinner, even me. Fact number two, sin must be paid for. Fact number three, Jesus loves me and paid for my sin. Fact number four, to be saved means to be rescued from my sin and have a relationship with God. And fact number five, I can be saved by repenting and believing on Jesus. Have you ever repented and believed on Jesus? You can right now. You just need in your heart to turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus and trust only Jesus to save you. No one else. Nothing else can save you, only Jesus, because he died on the cross for your sins and rose again. Guys, by this time, you should be able to say all five facts, so practice them. Don't forget to do your activity paper. The link is in the description below. Make sure you have your parents download that, print it off for you, and do all that stuff, and then have them email me so you guys can get this week's prize. And our memory verse this week is Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Guys, that's the end of Epic Bible Fun 2021, but it's not the end of the story. Next year, we're going to find out if Ed ever finds that treasure. Don't forget to watch my live stream Saturday night at 7. Guys, it has been a fantastic ride. Thank you for coming on this adventure with me. I'll see you guys next time, but until then, Mr. Forrest, out.